So on today's NOR video, we're going to feature the Sabre 350. Now, Echo Power are well known for their BS range of bandsaws. That includes the BS 250, 300, 350 and 400. But the next evolutionary step towards getting a premium bandsaw was the Sabre range. Now, at the moment, within that range, we've got the 350 and the 450. We're just going to quickly show you the specification of the Sabre 350 before moving on and showing the features and benefits. So the height of the Sabre 350 is 1892mm which is just over 6 foot 2. So then you've got the depth of cut and the throat. So the depth of cut is 285mm and the throat is 345. We've got a 1.5 horsepower motor the machine weighs in at 116 kgs. So, to look at the machine in a little bit more detail to show you the spec, we can easily open the doors, and what that reveals is the heavy duty cast iron flywheels. Obviously, one of the main features is the new improved guides, which are easily accessible and obviously can be operated and adjusted without using any tools. We've also upgraded the rip fence and the fence rail. So the fence can be operated from both sides of the blade without removing and repositioning the rail. But also within the rail, we've got a lot more fine adjustment to get them accurate cuts that are desired. The blades we can use on there are from a quarter inch up to a three quarter inch for your different types of cut, your different thicknesses of work. And obviously what you can see is the start stop and we've got the limit switches on both doors so while the machine or the doors are open obviously the machine can't be operated. We've got a quick release mechanism for changing the blades and also a quick release mechanism for adjusting the table position. Obviously with a machine weighing in at 116 kgs there's a lot of weight to move about so at a later point we'll also show you the wheel kit and how that is actually put onto the machine to be used or moved around using the jockey bar wheel. So what we've done is we've actually took off the rise and fall guard. Obviously isolated the machine at this point to make it nice and safe. Um, and we will be putting the guard back on later on in the video um, and showing you the adjustment. But I wanted to show you this with the guard off so we could really close in on the guides and show you why they are so good. And one of the reasons they are so good is what we said earlier is ease of use the way they're adjusted and if you can see now we're close up once we just loosen off with this thumb screw the actual guys will just move out of the way or spring out of the way so you've got the rear thrust and the two guide supports now these are sealed for life bearings that are going to help and support the blade when it's in use now obviously there's different width blades that you can use from a quarter up to three quarter on this machine and you may have to move the whole unit back to get that fine adjustment so you've got a, a ratchet angle here which loosens off and you can take the whole unit forward and back to get you there or thereabouts on the right position for each blade now once you've done that then the fine adjustment comes in by using these thumb screws and pressing them into position we've got a 19mm blade on there or a, a three quarter and obviously the wider the blades are, the easier they are to get the supports in position because there's more room to play with. Obviously when you get down to your quarter or your 6mm or even less, it becomes a bit more fiddly because you've got to be careful because what we don't want to do is damage this set, the set on the blade itself or the teeth. Now what happens with these, you've got the blade going left, right, left, right or in a skip tooth purpose, it's going left, right, central, because that's the clearing cut. That's what gets the timbers out of the way and gives you a nice clean finish. So we've roughly adjusted 
the guy front to back and got it in position then what we can do is we can just bring the bearing through or push it through so we're just about there and touching and as you rotate you'll see that it's not actually moving the bearing the bearing is just there for when we start with the cut and it pushes on it's going to give it support but when it's free running it doesn't want to be spinning at all and then the sides again we just push them in and we want them so there's just light or just a clearance between the bearing and the blade so that again when you do start to rotate the blade through or the machine starts up it's not going to actually run on the guides itself and that's the main thing about adjusting the guide supports it wants to be free running the only time these are going to come into operation is when you start doing your cut and the blade starts to twist or move because of your shape work it's then that the blade will get its support so basically we want to be clear of the set so in the back half or the back two thirds of the blade is where the support's required not at the front where the set is but we still want them clear from the blade so that when the machine's switched on and it's free running you haven't got any movement on there so what I'm meaning is and I think it might pick it up better on this one if we're pushing onto that with the blade and we start rotating it you can see now I've trapped the blade between the two guides so they're going to be running all the time and you're going to generate heat through that and then eventually it's going to help damage your blade so we keep that cigarette paper or a fuel thou whatever sort of size you want to put it so just see a bit of light through there now obviously we've done that and made it nice and easy without the guard on the next shot you're going to see the guard's going to be back in place and i'll show you how to adjust them but the point with this is i wanted to open it up and get you to view and see the accuracies of this guide system which is one of the top selling points on the sabers and like i said we've got this similar situation underneath the table so you've got support above and below but we'll show you that in a couple of minutes so now we've put the rise and fall guard back in place and just to identify you've got the left and right for your supports and the actual uh, thrust bearing release and then the ratchet handle there for the moving the whole unit front to back so let's have a look at the guides underneath so we've now come down underneath to the guides underneath the table obviously a bit more restricted with the light so we've uh, tried to help you there and just to identify you've got the ratchet handle which takes the whole unit back and forward and then we've got the rear thrust which just loosens off and obviously springs forward and back before we lock in place and then we've got the left and the right thrust uh, to obviously position either side of the blade easily accessible from under the table giving that extra bit of support so now we've got it underneath and above again with ease of use making sure that you can set these guides accurately for the full range of blades available on this bandsaw so i hope that's been helpful any more questions on your blades or your guides on the sabers or any bandsaws in particular please come back to us